All right, so welcome to your 15 minute or less summary of year eight measurement. When you look at the measurement topic, there are three main areas of measurement we looked at length, area, and volume. So I'll try and split the revision into these three areas so it gives you a better idea of what we're talking about. So I'm going to be going rather fast. So if there's anything you're not sure of, feel free to look back in the measurement playlist and watch a video in more detail of an area you're not so confident in. So let's start with length. Length um, is about measuring lines. So there are four main units we use for measuring length. And that's here at the top of the page, kilometers, meters, centimeters, and millimeters. To start off your conversion chart, look at your ruler, which you can take into a test and see in one centimeter how many millimeters there are. And that's 10. So once you fill in this, the rest is super easy because we just keep adding zeros. And then the other side is just division with those same numbers. So what questions will you get in regards to length? You'll get converting questions where it says you've got five meters. What would that be in centimeters? The way that you do this is that you have to look for the unit which you're in at the moment, which is meters, and look for the unit which you want to convert to, which is centimeters. And what you need to get there is to times by 100. So in order to do this question, you would go five times 100 equals 500 centimeters. Units are very important in this topic, so don't forget to put those units in. The other part where we were looking at length in this unit is perimeter. The perimeter is the outside length of a shape. So my advice when you're doing a perimeter question is to try and write all of the distances around a shape. Here's an example I've made here, and it's in meters. So remember when you see dashes of any sort, that they are equal um, lengths. So here there's a double dash, and here's a double dash. That means this is five meters. So your aim is to fill in all of the distances before you do any adding up or anything. Now up here we've got dashes, but we've got none of these lengths, but we know they're all equal. So if the bottom's nine and we've got three equal distances at the top, what do you think those distances will add up to? Three! I hope you said that. And all of these are three. So to get your perimeter now, it's just a matter of adding up. Five plus three plus three plus three plus three plus three plus five plus nine. And that equals 34 meters. Woohoo! The only other thing we were looking at in length is a special kind of perimeter called circumference. Circumference is the distance around a circle, and we use the formula circumference equals pi times d. Now, if you don't have a pi button on your calculator, we normally use 3.14 as the equivalent. And the word, no, not the word, but the letter d stands for diameter. And this is the distance from one end of a circle to the other crossing the middle. So it's very easy if the diameter here was 5, your answer would be pi times 5, which is equal to 15.7 to one decimal place. And whatever the unit was, pretend it's millimeters. But sometimes you don't get pi. Oh, you don't get, I don't mean you don't get pi. You get the radius instead of the diameter. The radius is halfway across the circle from the middle. So if you get the radius and you don't get the diameter, you would have to times this radius by 2. So sometimes you see the circumference formula as pi times 2 times r. This is the exact same thing, but instead of d, we've said 2 times r, which is exactly the same as the diameter distance-wise. So that's our summary of length, converting lengths, perimeters, and circumference, which is the perimeter of a circle. We're now going to look at area. An area is measured in something squared. So it might be kilometers squared, meters squared, centimeters squared, millimeters squared. So when you're converting between areas, say you're going from meters squared to centimeters squared, you do the same process as before, but all the numbers are squared too. So in this case, you would times by 100 squared. In year eight math, we also learn about a special unit 
of area called the hectare. The hectare is equal to 10,000 square meters. So if you need a little conversion chart for your hectares, this is what it is here. And hectares is normally used to measure areas or farms or land. It's a very handy measurement to know. So here I've got the common areas that you're going to need in your year 8 measurement test. Parallelograms, triangles, trapeziums, kites, rhombuses, and circles. Um, don't forget that squares and rectangles are a very easy length times width. So, you know, this would be the length, this would be the width. Times them together, get an area, so a unit squared. Something I want you to remember is when you're looking at heights of these shapes, we are looking for something called the perpendicular height. It's a height with a 90 degree angle. So no slopies. You're not getting, um, if you see a number here or a number here, that's wrong. We're looking for the height, which is perpendicular to the base. So at a 90 degree angle to the base. And it's the same for your kite here. You're looking for those 90 degrees there. So um, these are your formulas. I've written them in other ways, so people might understand them a bit better. I'm going to talk about the triangle, trapezium, and kite because they're the most difficult ones people find. So triangle is base times height divided by 2. So you're going to look for the base. You've got to look for a height, which is going up like this at a 90 degree angle. So to find the area of this triangle, you'd go 6 times 3, base times height, divided by 2. 18 divided by 2, which is 9 meters squared. For the trapezium, um, there's a good trapezium song, half the sum of the parallel sides times the height between them. So half the sum of the parallel sides. Parallel are these lines that never meet. They have little arrows. So if it says half the sum of the parallel sides, pretend this is 7 and 8, you would have to go 7 plus 8, that's a sum adding, divided by 2, and times the height between them. So this would be 15 divided by 2 times 5, which is equal to 37.5 um, centimeters squared. Now kites, it's half times x times y. x is the diagonal going vertically, and y is the diagonal going across. So if you just times those diagonals and divide by 2, you're all Gucci for kites and rhombuses. All right, circles are pi times r squared. So r remembers the radius, so to do this it would be 5 times pi squared, which is equal to 25 pi. You can times it in your calculator if you want to get the actual answer, but it's 25 times pi. Sometimes though if you get the radius, they might say, oh look, you got the, sorry not the radius, the diameter. Look, the diameter is 10, what do you do? You would have to half that diameter and then You've got the radius. One extra part of the area of circles we did in year eight was looking at sectors. A sector is like a wedge or a slice of a circle. The way that you figure these out is you find the area of the circle. So you find the area of the full circle, pi times r squared, and then you times it by the fraction of the circle you got. And the way you figure out what fraction of the circle you got is the angle divided by 360. So in this case here, the angle is 88 degrees, so we've got 88 out of 360 degrees there, and you times it by the full area of the circle. So it's like you've got a full circle, and then you're like, oh, but my wedge is only 88 degrees. So you find the fraction out, and you get the area of the sector. So times these together, you'd have a calculator in this test, and you would get 12.28 centimeters squared. There are two special ways that you can use area in year 8 maths. The first is composite shapes. Composite shapes are shapes that are made up with either two or more areas put together or two or more areas that you're going to have to subtract. So in the first one here, you see the shape and you're like, hold up, where's the area of houses? Like, I didn't do that. Well, what you need to do is identify is there is a triangle here and there is a square. So in order to get the area of the full shape, you'd have to find the area of the, sorry, rectangle plus triangle. And you add them together. In this one here, to get the shaded area, you realize 
uh, what's that weird shape? But you're like, oh, hold up. There appears to be a circle and a rectangle. So how would you find the shaded area? You'd find the area of the rectangle and then just minus that circle out of it. So if you see a weird shape like you've never seen before, try and see what shapes make it up or you might have to subtract a shape out of it. And the other thing we looked at is surface area. Surface areas, if you've got a nice box or prism of some sort and you had to paint the whole thing, how much area would this be? You kind of have to look 3D for this and realize that, oh, you've got shape number one, shape number two, shape number three, and there's two of them. Because, you know, shape number three would be at the bottom here as well. Shape number two would be on the side, like it's repeated. So you'd have to find the area of shape one, the area of shape two, they're all rectangles, the area of shape three, and times all of it by two to get the full area of the shape. You might also get shapes like this. In that case, you'll need to find the area of the triangles, their shape number one. Then you'd get the area of these rectangles. They're on all the sides here. And maybe at the base, it might be a different size. So you have to try imagine if you had to slice up that shape and flatten it out, what shapes can you see? And then add them all together. We then come to volume. Volume is something cubed, like the unit cubed. So kilometers cubed, meters cubed, centimeters cubed, millimeters cubed. So what do you think is going to happen to our conversions here? We're going to cube it all. So it's looking 3D when we're looking at volume. So we have volume, which is centimeters cubed, meters cubed. But you might also think of volumes, like measuring what's inside a 3D shape, as using liters. So liters and milliliters, we normally use this for liquids. Another word for this is capacity. So if you want to get between volume and capacity, say, for example, we've got one centimeter cubed, this is the same as one milliliter. And if you've got one meter cubed, that's the same as a thousand liters. I normally tend to stick to this one. So convert to centimeters cubed and then go to milliliters. And that makes it easier to convert between volume and capacity. So the volumes of um, the volumes of any shape is quite easy to find. You only do prisms in your rate. And there's a simple formula. Volume equals the cross section of a shape. So if you had to slice the shape down, what would be the shape you see times its height? So say, for example, the cylinder here, you would find the area. Oh, I should write that. The area of the cross section. So you'd find the area of a circle. You use your area knowledge and times it by the height. So you'd find the area of the circle times eight. For this triangle here, you'd find the area of the triangle times its height. Sometimes the heights are written um, up here. So don't, um, don't stress. As long as it gives you like the distance of that length, you're all good. The cube, you would find the area of the square times by its height. Same process for all of our volume calculations. The last part of our topic was looking at Pythagoras. So a very special rule to find missing angles or missing sides of a right angle triangle. So 90 degrees in the corner. This is the formula that you use. A and B are always your shorter sides and C is always the longer side. But to keep this to 15 minutes, I'm actually going to pause this here and put a link in my description to a very good Pythagoras video for you to see. So hopefully um, you've got a better idea now of what's coming up in your year eight measurement test, looking at length, area and volumes. And don't forget to check out Pythagoras as well. So don't forget to do lots of practice questions so you can see all the different types of questions you can get and you should be all set for your measurement test.